Fury combines the mechanics of twin-stick bullet hell shooters and an old-school beat-em-up, structured in a boss rush format. You play as a sci-fi samurai, he's kind of like a wanderer, you just broke out of a celestial prison, aided by a ubiquitous stranger dressed up as a purple rabbit. It sounds silly, but it's countered by very precise, challenging, and rewarding gameplay tailored for the hardcore crowd. So with that said, here are seven reasons to play Fury. Few games out there capture such a unique art style as Fury. It's rich with futuristic synth-based jams and a neon paint job reminiscent of Tron, and it oozes with an ultra-modern plastic presentation, colorful vistas that fisheye into the horizon, and a super-saturated color palette. When you combine all of this sticky sweet hyper-stylizing, you have one hell of an eye-catcher, especially when countered by the mature and technically refined combat system and the cutthroat yet sophisticated pacing. The floating islands, the teleporting rabbit, and the wildly varying yet consistent boss designs convey a sense of mysticism and reinforce the overall themes of the game. One of Fury's strongest assets is that the progression in the game is personal rather than from the character. Every single combat tool that you have at the end of the game, you had available at the very start of the game. The sense of progression comes not from leveling up or becoming stronger, faster, or by acquiring new abilities, but the player's personal progress at more adeptly using the tools at his or her disposal. The player feels more powerful even though nothing has really changed. Most games provide progression by giving you more shit to play with, leveling you up, artificially making you feel stronger. It makes everything else in relation to you easier. Instead, Fury asks you to use yourself as your greatest weapon. It layers the game with a nice sense of professionalism and asks that we become accountable for our own success in the game. The neat side effect being that players become more invested and take ownership in their character because everything must be fought for and earned. Combat in Fury is damn satisfying, and is structured with a focus on technical execution. Fury can be summed up as a dance of restraint versus complexity. Fury's combat is shallow and minimal, but I say that as a compliment. Four actions are available from the onset of the game, and it's inclusive from there on out. Attack, dash, parry, and shoot. Holding each action's button charges that move, parry is the only exception, which makes them more powerful at the cost of slower movement speed. So Fury exercises the hell out of a very small set of abilities until they feel like they were always there. It's an intricate dance of rock, paper, scissors, and lightning fast ping pong reflexes. It's fun, it's super fun, and the impact of those sword duels is so satisfying. You really feel like you're fighting the boss in Fury, rather than just depleting its health bar. The focus on technical execution is softened by the generous health and recharge mechanics, ensuring players have sufficient opportunities to make mistakes and tank their way through difficult encounters. This allows the development team to take some creative risks, implementing interesting mechanics during the boss battles that promote the game's difficulty. This is especially helped by the life regeneration mechanic, which ensures that every phase of each boss can be fought at least twice before the entire fight must be restarted. It's a system that's generous enough that the developers could be innovative and risky with their design, yet stingy enough to force players to consistently improve before moving forward. They took something forgettable, like a life regeneration system, and polished it into something truly compelling. Believe me, what's waiting at the end of all this is so worth the trouble. You and me, we're in the same boat now. Now let's get the hell out of here. The narrative in Fury is understated against the backdrop of the Bosch Rush format, but excellent nonetheless. Fury adopts a disconnected narrative in which bits and pieces of the plot are provided and players are given ample time to postulate on what it all means. And unlike most modern day games that lay out the plot and the critical backstory at the start of the game, in Fury you discover the cause for your journey at the end of the game. You live the exploration of the mysticism through each boss encounter. The game certainly hints at the explanation and spoon feeds you just enough information to figure it out, but not all players will see it coming, and that's the beauty of it. So the bosses in Fury are a stark contrast when compared to traditional video game development. If you think about popular combat games such as the Souls series or the God of War series, it's commonplace for games to create bosses and enemies that dwarf the player both in size and how they approach combat mechanics. Fury does it differently. Each boss has a toolkit and size very similar to the player, and this extends to the degree at which bosses are equally dangerous as the player is. Drop your guard for a split second and they'll carve you up like a roast turkey at Thanksgiving, just like you will if they do the same. The beauty of this design is that it evokes a real sense of dualism, kind of like you're both gladiators equally matched. This feeling of equality makes you not only feel capable of defeating them, but prepared for the challenges ahead. 
but more importantly removes any sense of defeat when you're slain because it's usually your fault if you die. Each boss will challenge you in a different way, some via reflexes, some testing your timing with projectiles, and others in intimate close quarter battles such as with the Hand, a noble turquoise knight with a green sword of light. He can deflect bullets, so you'll need to get cozy with your katana. Other bosses require an emphasis on range combat or puzzles, you'll get plenty of diversity in the gameplay, and it all feels very fair because through the game you'll become dearest friends with your gameplay toolbox. Fury's difficulty stems from its design to capture the hardcore and speedrunning community's attention. Three difficulties are available, Promenade, which is the easiest of the three, Fury, and Furier, the most difficult and most rewarding. The great thing about this design is that the developers didn't compensate for the average player by altering how the game combat was experienced, dumbing down the parrying mechanics, adding special moves, power-ups, things like that that a lot of games include to lower the average skill requirement in their games. Fury's main design in its combat is for the hardcore crowd, and the lesser difficulties are designed to just make the core experience easier and shorter, but not to change or water down the game's challenge. And as such, nothing was dumbed down other than to give some of the lesser skilled players the option to opt into a lower difficulty. This enabled a dev team to target the casual market in addition to, without having to dedicate resources to change major systems. And that's a big, big plus. So there's a critical close-up of why you might want to check out Fury. The game totally kicks ass, what else can I say? So thanks for watching guys, and if you haven't already, subscribe to Downward Thrust now because we put together some really interesting videos for you on a daily basis, and have a kick-ass day.